Welcome to another video from Ski Boat Parts Online.com, where our passion is keeping older ski boats on the water. We produce these videos to help you, our customer. Today we've got a uh, 93 Mastercraft in the shop with a Inmar 351 Ford carbureted engine. And this particular boat has had uh, a, a rough winter. It had some uh, freeze damage and, and other issues. So one of the things that we discovered in doing uh, some of the repairs was the distributor is not advancing. This is a common problem on the older Fords. We see it all the time in the, you know, the, the late 80s, mid 80s. Uh, uh, early 90s uh, with, with these problems. So we're going to go through the distributor diagnosis uh, and the replacement and why we're doing it. Now we discovered this distributor issue while I was doing the uh, initial uh, engine setup. We had rebuilt the carburetor and was checking the uh, the high idle, uh, adjusting the idle and noticed that the uh, something was, an, was still off and it, it ends up being the distributor was not advancing. Actually it was stuck somewhere around 18 or 20 degrees advance. It was not uh, returning back to the stock 6 degree advance setting at idle. Now in the field some of the symptoms that you would uh, pick up would be uh, the engine stumbling, uh, lack of power, um, anything above 1500 RPM if the engine's feeling really weak um, some backfiring, those are some indicators that the timing may not be advancing. The timing needs to advance from, six, on a Ford, uh, we set them at 6 degrees uh, advance at idle, and it will go all the way up to around 25, 28 degrees total advance throughout the RPM range. Now, <clears throat> all of the older, well, virtually all the marine ski boat motors I've ever seen were uh, mechanical advance, not a vacuum advance. Uh, inside the distributor uh, is a set of fly weights and a set of return springs that uh, as the distributor RPM picks up the fly weights start to fly out and it physically rotates the plate inside the distributor which advances the timing. Um, so if you've got a boat that uh, has been running normal but it's getting older, it's got the original distributor in it and all of a sudden you're starting to notice that higher RPMs, uh, the engine is stumbling and backfiring. Uh, sometimes the symptom is similar to running out of gas. Uh, it can be a little bit uh, similar to that and confusing. But one of the things to check is the distributor advancing. The only way you can do that is with a timing light. Um, put a timing light on the engine when it's running and at idle your timing mark should be lining up on a Ford at 6 degrees advance. Uh, if it's somewhere other than that and you adjust it, but really all I have to do is rev the throttle. You rev the throttle up a couple times and that timing mark should be moving every time you rev it up. If the timing is stationary and it's not advancing, you've got the dreaded uh, uh, mechanical advance problem. Um, unfortunately, uh, when this occurs, the only cure for it is to replace the entire distributor. Uh, many, many years ago we could buy replacement springs that would go inside the distributor that control the counterweights, the flyweights, uh, and you could buy those springs for a buck a piece. But that uh, supply has been long gone for at least 15 years. So now uh, we're left with the only solution is to replace the distributor. But before you do that, just verify it with a timing light to make sure that that timing mark is not moving. We're going to go ahead and shoot a little video that shows this one in its stuck position. When we're all done, we're going to shoot another video segment that shows what it's supposed to look like. Um, and hopefully this will help you. So now we're going to get into uh, the mechanics of changing the distributor the easy way. Okay, this poor engine uh, has had a lot of work done on it recently. and. Uh, once we got it fired up and running again, I noticed that the idle was on the high side uh, and it started immediately right up. And so I put a timing light on it 
And what I found was the timing was showing instead of 8 degrees advance, it's uh, right around 15 degrees advance. So that's a clue to a problem. I'm going to go ahead and fire it up again. I've had to turn the idle down several times. Right now we're idling at 640, 650, right around there. But when I put the light on the timing mark, we're off the charts. The timing mark is at least an inch away from the pointer. And it'll rev fine like this all day, but the problem is the timing is not advancing when I rev it. timing mark is staying put. That is a telltale sign. One reason why it was idling so fast and I backed the uh, idle speed down on the carburetor to compensate is because we're stuck in probably a 20 degree advanced timing mode. It doesn't advance, it doesn't retard. And all that is controlled inside the distributor the uh, mechanical advanced distributor is not working. It's seized up, it's stuck, the springs are broken or something in here is wrong. This is a common problem on these older ski boat motors. The only cure to that, unfortunately, is to replace the distributor. Okay, uh, a call I get all the time is, do I have a Ford or a Chevrolet in my boat? They don't know. So the easiest way to determine if it's a small block Ford or Chevrolet in your older ski boat is where the distributor is. The Ford has the distributor in the front of the engine. It's up here. GM Chevrolets are going to be in the back. They're going to be right about here. That's where the Chevrolet is going to be. The next big difference is the, uh, uh, the cylinder locations. Ford calls the front cylinder on the starboard side of the boat number one that's the number one cylinder Chevrolet has it over here as their number one so pay attention all this information is readily available online in a variety of sources uh, between the Ford small block uh, and the Chevrolet 5.7 I mean there's lots of information but on the Ford our distributor is up here we're working on a Ford today this is the distributor that's uh, giving us trouble so this is what we're going to work on, is changing the distributor in a Ford Marine engine. The first thing I want to do is, again, cylinder one is over here. I've identified this is the spark plug wire for number one. And on these Fords, they're usually always right here, number one, pointing at the carburetor. And what I do is I'll make a mental note. I'm going to make a mental note where the rotor is pointing once we get in. But we want to put this back the same way. Again, this is the easy way. Number one cylinder is right here. And that's where we want number one to be when we're all finished with the new distributor. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the cap off. Take the... Uh, coil wire off. We're also going to be changing the coil anyway to the Pertronics coil. Okay, our rotor is not pointing at number one, so we're going to rotate the ignition till the rotor is pointing. Again, we had this right here at this screw. We'll put this back on. Number one is pointed right about here. So another trick you can do is take a marker and put a mark right where it's pointed. I'm going to do that next. Okay, found my marker. Thought I lost it for a minute. Our rotor should be pointing here for number one. We're also going to line up the pointer with number one. pretty close. Okay, it took several attempts of rotating the motor, uh, but the rotor right now is pointed right where our little black mark is. And down here, our pointer is so close to being spot on with our white timing mark. So that's what we want to uh, leave it at. When we put the new distributor in, 
this rotor has got to be pointing right here. So now we can pull the distributor out. Okay, we've loosened, pre-loosened the nuts on the coil. We're going to pull these rusty nuts off. Now the black is going to be the negative side of the coil. You've got a black wire going to the distributor. The gray wire that attaches to the same post is going to be your tachometer sender wire. And we've pre-loosened the clamp. Take this rusty nut off. Break that loose. That's going to be your purple wire. Purple is ignition from the ignition switch. There's some rusty stuff here. And this is going to the distributor. So here's our distributor wire. Our coil is broke loose. Next is going to be uh, the hold down bolt at the base of the distributor. So we're going to take that loose next. You're going to need a half inch wrench to loosen this hold down bolt and drop your wrench in the bilge and she's finger tight. Now before I go any further it's an older motor so I'm going to get some compressed air and I'm going to blow all around this area so any debris that's sitting up there we don't want to fall into the engine. We're going to blow that away before we pull this distributor out. Alright, just to uh, show you what goes on and, and what's happened here, this is a, an electronic ignition version. I've take, there's two screws that held the uh, coil down. I pulled those off. Below here are the fly weights, and if you look right here, you get something to point with, there is a return spring that is broken. That return spring is the root cause of our problem. Now, this one here is actually still in place. There's two springs. This one is still intact, but this one is broken. That's why we're getting some intermittent issues, and it's trying to return, but it's not returning all the way. Uh, but that is the problem that's causing the distributor not to return to uh, six degrees advance. Now we'll go ahead and pull the distributor out. the debris should be out of there. Now the little hold down clamp to remove the distributor, we're going to pull it all the way out. We're going to set him off to the side. Now the distributor can come out. Alright guys, I cheated a little bit. This thing was really stuck in there. So I took a small screwdriver and I just pried a little bit to break it loose. Now, if you notice as it comes up, Notice this shaft is rotating as it comes up. That's because the gear at the bottom here is an angle cut gear. And when it goes in, we want our rotor to point to our mark, but we're going to have to lead it. So when it drops down and feeds in, then it'll be all the way over. So we'll go ahead and set this on the bench and compare it to our new one. Okay, the old distributor is out. This is a Prestolite screw down distributor. Uh, there is a tag there, but it says Prestolite. Okay, there's an O ring right here, and that's what was kind of seized, keeping me from pulling it up easily. So, we're in the shop, so we just got on the phone and called Sarah at Ski Boat Parts Online, and she just went to the parts room and grabbed us a new distributor. So, let's open this bad boy up. This is a Petronix electronic distributor and they're packaged pretty well now first thing I want to tell you this kit is going to come with some additional springs for different uh, advanced curves my experience with the tournament ski boats use the springs that are already in the distributor uh, I don't recommend changing them uh, now if you really get into fine tuning you can go ahead and do that, but uh, my experience has been phenomenal with the stock spring setup. Alright, this is a billet aluminum 
machine, CNC machined distributor. We'll get these wires off of there. Marine distributor. Now, of course the cap is on, but what you're looking for is this distance, making sure the O-ring is there, the gears are running the same direction. You'll find a difference on a ro reverse rotation motor, but uh, virtually all our modern ski boats are automotive rotation, so we're comparing these. Um, gears are the same, uh, distance all looks good, so we should be good to go to put this in. All right, there is a, a slight difference between these two distributors that we picked up that I had never noticed before, but I wanted to verify some things. But the distance between the bottom of the gear and the end of the shaft is different between the old one and the new one. Now, all that's going to affect going up inside of here is the drive rod for the oil pump and how far that oil pump hex rod will, will go. So I took a measurement. I literally took this pencil and I put it down the distributor hole and I put a uh, and let it rest. The eraser rest on top of the hex shaft for the oil pump and with a flat bar I just crossed the top of the, the deck there, marked how deep that was and then brought the pencil back out here. The old rod will go up about an inch. On the new one it's going to go up about a little over a half inch. So it seems kind of odd so I actually called Petronics who makes this and talked with their people to verify that that's plenty of engagement and they assured me that that is plenty of engagement uh, for the oil pump shaft, drive shaft to go up inside of here. So we've sold a lot of these, I've installed several of these and we've never had an issue so but that's the first time I've actually noticed that there is a slight difference. And it may be this Prestolite. This Prestolite distributor may be an oddball that's a little bit longer. There's a kind of a weird uh, color here in the machining where they, uh, it's just a different machining process there. So I'm not really sure about that. So we double check and they say we are good to go. Now, one of the tricks before we drop this in is coating this with good old STP oil treatment. That will help this gear find its home and slide into place. And you're going to see me do that in just a minute. All right, good old fashioned STP oil treatment. We're going to put a little bit here on the on the O-ring. And we're going to lather up the gear pretty good. Gets them down into that shaft where the hole where the oil drive shaft's going in. And now we're ready to drop it in. Now this gets a little interesting because this some, some jiggling has to take place. And here's our rotor. We're going to engage camshaft teeth. And when she goes down, she's going to rotate. Here's where we want to line up. So we're going to lead that a little bit. And she went right down in there. And that is extremely close. We got it on the first shot. The, the trick is the oil. The STP oil were set all the way down in the base. So we should be good to go. We're going to put our uh, hold down block. Truth be told, this is the first time I've ever got it on the first shot. Usually I have to take it in and out a couple of times. Now we want to get that so it's just snug enough to where we can rotate it, we can set our timing. Okay, so we'll be able to adjust that. Again, we're lined right up. Next is to put our cap back on and transfer our wires over, but we're going to put new wires on this engine as well. Alright, all distributor caps have some type of an alignment peg or notch 
so they only go on one way. The Petronix has a little square peg right here that matches up with a square notch in the base. So it'll only go on right one way. Okay. All right, next is a new set of wires, and we're going to replace the ignition coil. All right, we've got our new Petronix distributor, and we're going to match that with a new Petronix uh, flamethrower ignition coil. Uh, we'll put all the part numbers on the side, but it's an MET0040. Um, we'll open this up. It's a, I believe it's a 40,000 volt coil. And the terminals are not rusty. All right. So, my, uh, my assistant has already loosened the brackets up so we can pull this out. We've already loosened the clamp up. Take the old coil off. Slide the new coil in. May have to loosen it up a little bit more. It's a little bit thicker. There we go. See how where we want to put this. That looks pretty good, but we're going to rotate this. All right, we'll put our bolts back in. All right, we got that good German torque setting of guten tight we got clearance there clearance here I'm gonna slide it up just a hair before we snug that down we've got access to our access to our water temp sender so we can snug this down now All right, I just clipped uh, some excess length off of the wires, two wires coming out of the new distributor. We don't need a lot of extra wire up there. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, strip these back. In the kit comes a pair of ring terminals right here that I'm gonna uh, crimp on there. So you don't need to go hunting for those. They're in the little bag. Three hundred pounds of torque. From these old man wrists. I like to see that wire sticking out proud. Always give it a little pull to make sure. Now they have a very short amount of uh wire uh, protector come out the bottom and these wires are laying on top of this uh, uh, water intake so we're going to apply a little bit of uh, insulation I call it snake skin this is extremely pliable wire and we're used to a little stiffer wire here Just push that in there. That'll give us just a little bit of protection. Okay, now your negative terminal is going to get the black wire and the tachometer sender. On the negative side. The positive side is going to get the purple wire, which is our ignition wire. And our new 
distributor red. And we'll snug those down. There we go. Okay, next is going to be spark plug wires. Okay, our new distributor is in the hole and mounted down, but it's loose so we can adjust it. We've replaced the spark plug wires. We've replaced the coil to the flamethrower matching coil with this distributor. And we've replaced the spark plugs uh, on all eight cylinders. So I think we're ready to do an initial fire up and run. You will need a timing light. That's a requirement. You're going to have to have a timing light. I'm going to keep it plugged together. Uh, plug it back in. Here we go. Uh, they're simple to uh, hook up. You've got a ground uh, cable. You've got a 12 volt positive cable which I connected to the starter. You can go directly to the battery. Uh, you just need 12 volt power. Uh, but this is going to be your pickup coil and this clamps to the spark plug wire. The number one plug wire and there's a, always going to be a little arrow that points to the spark plug. Uh, you want to make sure you do that. So this is our number one plug wire here. We have our arrow pointing toward the spark plug. So that's good to go. We have water in our bucket. If it fires off, which I'm sure it will, uh, we'll turn the water on. And uh, I also have the uh, throttle stop. I turned it in a half a turn for a little higher idle because you just don't know what it's going to take to get it to fire off and get it set up and running. So I've done that. Okay, I think we're ready to do a test fire. We'll give it one pump. Voila! We have water. Turn the water on. Water's wide open. Be careful, don't eat your uh, timing light wires near that belt. And what we're looking for, now the, Ford, the newer Fords with the GT40 heads, they set these at uh, 8 degrees advance. So the white mark and the pointer are off by about 10 degrees right now. So I need to rotate the distributor until they line up. You also heard the idle come down. Now, right now we're at uh, I sixes. But what I want to show you is I'm going to rev this up a little bit and you're going to watch the distributor marks move. This is what the old distributor was not doing. and it returns right back to where it belongs. That's why we changed this distributor uh, because the broken spring was not allowing it to return back to its zero mark. So now we're going to button down the, uh, the distributor. Watch your hands and fingers, moving parts. Double check timing, we're still spot on. Okay, now we can set our idle. Yeah, just over six. We're gonna set this one initially for about 650 till we get to the water.
And I like to set these under load while underway with the prop turning. We cannot do that here on the driveway. Okay, I'm happy with that. That's our initial setting. Let's see how it restarts. Very good. Okay. Thanks for watching this video from SkiBoatPartsOnline.com. My name is Ron, and we appreciate you watching our videos. If you like these, hit the like button. And if you want to see more of them, hit the subscribe button. Thank you and have a great week boating.